Hello foodies and welcome back to another recipe video. This one is going to be for this delicious and tantalizing bulgur wheat jollof. Bulgur is my go-to replacement for white rice. On days I don't feel like having white rice, but I want that rice experience, especially the koas bulgur wheat, which I'm going to be using in this recipe video. So if you'd like to see how I made this meal, make sure to keep on watching. A list of ingredients is going to be down in the video description if you want to follow through and try this for yourself. This is the type of bulgur which I'm going to be using, which is a coarse one that has the grains large like this. You also have the fine ones and bulgur wheat is a common whole grain that is used in a lot of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean cuisine. It kind of gives me the feeling of eating rice without having rice and apparently it's more nutritious than rice. Don't quote me on that. I just enjoy it on days I want to eat rice, but I don't want rice. I'm also going to be using some frozen vegetables of green peas, carrots, an assortment then i'm going to be using canned tomatoes as well as olive oil to fry all of my ingredients together and then i'm going to be using some white onions these i've already chopped up at this point i use about half of an onion and then for my season i'm using chili flakes oregano seasoning cube garlic powder and paprika now that i have all the ingredients out of the way it is time to cook the first thing i'm doing is i've put my bulgur in a bowl and i'm going to soak this with hot water for about 10 to 15 minutes and while that is soaking I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil to my pan and I'm going to add my chopped onions to this the process is just like cooking jollof rice but rather than using rice you replace it with bulgur with that's just the general gist of how this meal is made so I'm going to fry my onions for about two to three minutes and once that is fried I'm going to go in to add my canned tomatoes you can use fresh blended tomatoes and pepper if you want this is what I had in the house and which is why I'm using it at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and add all of my seasonings, my seasoning cube and stir everything together so it combines well. I'm also going to add some salt and any other additional seasoning added. Salt, added onion powder, then I added more oregano. So you can just season it to your preference. If you like your, your food spicy, you can add more chili. If you like your food more aromatic, you can add more herbs, whatever works for you. Now I'm just going in here to stir everything well so it combines. I also added a little bit of water, about a quarter cup. And once I was done mixing everything, I covered this with a lid and allowed it to cook for 20 minutes at low heat. Cooking it like that would remove the slapping taste that the tomatoes has. And once I was done cooking, I'm going to add my frozen veg, which I had already defrosted a little at this point. This I'm going to mix together with the tomato that has already fried for a little bit. And the aroma at this point was smelling really, really lovely. This sauce you can actually eat with like potatoes, yam or rice on the side. But once I was done adding the veg and mixing everything together, I washed my soaked bulgur before adding it to the sauce that I'd already cooked so far. Now I added about a cup of water to my burger. Burger doesn't need to cook for long. I just cooked this for an additional 10 minutes in all honesty after stirring everything to combine. Just soaking it and then cooking it for that 10 minutes is enough to cook burger. I like mine cooked through really soft but you can cook yours for less if you want it a bit more al dente or hard. After it had cooked for 10 minutes, I had checked that all the water had evaporated. I gave it one last stir tasted to see if I added if I needed to add any extra salt or pepper but with that out of the way I served myself a nice portion I actually enjoyed having this I had it with mackerel and a side of corn egg and paprika sort of like baked in the oven and this was so satisfying so delicious and actually felt really full after having this so like i mentioned earlier on there's going to be a list of ingredients down below and if you do try this don't forget to tag me on social media at conscious foodie and until next time stay happy and healthy bye